Hi there, I'm Christopher, and in this video, what I want to take a look at is how we can start our Django project and our Django app. Now, before we get into uh, actually creating those, I want to make sure that I define the terms project and app or application because while in English or in kind of a lot of normal development circles, you might be using those two terms interchangeably because a lot of times they, they can be synonyms. In Django, they actually mean very specific things, and we want to make sure that we highlight the differences there. In a nutshell, what you're going to have is a parent-child relationship. So our project is going to be the parent, and our project can then have one or more apps. Now, you're going to find that in a fair number, maybe a lot of applications or projects or whatever it is that you're doing with Django, it's sort of, it does wind up being a little bit funny when we get the, the terminology there. Um, but what you're going to find a lot of the time is that one project, one app is all you're ever going to, to need. But let's start to define the terms and hopefully explain all of this. First up, our project. We will have one and only one project. Our project is going to encompass our entire website. Our project is going to be the entry point for our website. Our project is going to know everything that's going on with our website. Our project is going to have the core settings. Our project is going to have the core routing or routing file, depending on whether or not you're a route or a route kind of person. It's going to know everything. So we have one project for our entire website. Our project can then have one or more apps. Our apps are going to be where our code exists that we're going to use to respond to user requests, to communicate with the database, to add in our logic, to set up our models, to do all of those types of things. And if we think about it, that's typically where we're going to be spending the bulk of our time, is doing those types of things. So almost everything that you're going to be doing is going to be inside of your app. Now, I did mention the fact that we can have one or more apps, and you might decide to divide things up between apps, maybe for uh, managing a, a relatively large website, maybe for security purposes or otherwise. We're going to keep what we're doing here relatively straightforward. We're going to use one project and one app. So our project is going to be that parent, our app is going to be that child, and it's going to have all of the code and everything else that we're going to be using here. Let's create each one of those. I've already got Django installed. I've got my virtual environment activated. So now I want to create that project. And there's a command line tool that we can use uh, called Django Admin to set this up. So I'm going to say Django Admin start project. And we'll give this a name. Let me just zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to call this Relic Cloud. And then I'm going to say dot. Oops. I'm going to fix this. Let's say project and then dot. OK. So you're going to notice, first of all, the name that I've selected there. And I chose the generic name of project. This is what I always like to do, is go with a generic name there. Because I like to make sure that I know exactly where my project is so those times when I do need to go into it and update something, I know where to go. So there is my project. That second parameter of dot means to create it in the current folder, which is almost always what you want. If you leave that off, it's going to create it into a subfolder, and then your directory structure becomes a little bit awkward and, and so forth. So I like it like that. I'm going to leave that with the dot there, and I'm going to hit Enter. And now what we're going to notice is that we've got a handful of files that were now created, that, that little project folder, and then this manage pi. Let's highlight a couple of files here. First up is this manage.py file. And this manage.py 
is the entry point for our application. And it's the script file that we're going to use to perform a lot of the operations that we need to perform to manage our application. Things like updating the database, creating super users, etc. That's inside of manage.py. The next big file that we want to highlight is urls.py. This is going to be the entry point for all of our routing. So a request is going to come in, it's going to be sent to here first, and then this will go ahead and dispatch this out either directly to a function or method that needs to be called, or more typically to a, another routing table, which we'll see in the next video. The last big file is going to be settings.py, and I'm actually going to pin this in because I'm going to need to come back to this in a moment. Settings.py as you might imagine, contains a collection of settings. And so if you scroll through here, you're going to notice that there's things like um, uh, whether or not we're doing debug, the secret key. Down below, there's things like our databases. We've got middleware. And then we've got our apps. And so our apps, again, is where all of that code is going to exist. And this is what we need to create next. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to leave this here. And now I'm going to go back one more time to Django admin. And I'm going to say start app. And I'm going to call this Relic Cloud, which will be the name of the fictitious space travel agency that we're going to work with. So let me go ahead and hit enter. We'll create that. And now let's see what we've got. Back over here, you're going to notice that there's my Relic Cloud folder. And we've got a handful of different files here. At a real quick high level, admin is going to be used to register models and configure the built-in administration site. Our models.py is where all of our database models are set up. Our tests, if we're using test-driven development, can be placed there. Our views.py for all of our view functions, view classes, etc. And we can, of course, split those out into separate files if we so desire. Now, the one file that I skipped over there is apps.py. And you'll notice on apps.py that there's one class here that's called Relic Cloud Config. One thing that can sometimes be a little bit confusing with our projects and our apps, or our project in our apps, is that even though we are going to have a parent-child relationship, this is not, this is not automatically set up. That even though I just created the project and created the app, no relationship exists. So the big thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that I register that as an installed app. So back over here on settings.py, I'm now going to say the name of the folder. So relicloud.apps and then the name of that config. So let me add that in. And now I've got that. So what we did here is we created our project, again, the parent for everything, and we created the app, which is where all of our code is going to exist to interact with the database, to respond to user requests, etc. With both of those set up, now we can start adding in code and do our hello world which is going to be the next video.